the protests would spread the way that they have. We never thought that people would rise up in their own communities. We knew that people were going to stand with us in St. Louis, but we didn't know that it would spread, but it did. And here we are. You know, in those early days, we, we made two commitments. We made a commitment to stand today and a commitment to fight tomorrow. And we made those commitments despite it being illegal in St. Louis to stand still. We made those commitments despite being arrested for what we knew was right. We made those commitments despite being tear gas and shot at with rubber bullets. Uh, we made those commitments because we knew that we were on the right side of justice. And those commitments started as commitments in protest. You know, protest is confrontation, protest is disruption, protest is the end of silence. And for us, the protest began in the street, but protest is so many things. You know, I think often of this tweet, not only because I stand here as a, as a proud black gay man, but also because what I've learned, what I've lived, is that there's danger in the either or. When loving myself only looks one way, when protest is either in the streets or not at all, this puts constraints on the way that we express ourselves and the ways that we can get free. And expressing and loving myself is often so much more complex uh, than out affords me. You know, I called my father one day for the first time for relationship advice, and it happened to be about my first boyfriend. And he handled the call so well, and it was the first time that we ever talked about sexuality. And I wasn't in the closet, but I was in the quiet with him. And when I think about the quiet, I think about the places where you're not supposed to make noise. And for so many of us, the world is a place where we're not supposed to make noise, where we're asked to hide who we are and be silent about the injustices that we face. And I've been to a lot of colleges recently, and I've been thinking about this notion of in the quiet. What does it mean to come out of the quiet? I mean, the image of the library comes to mind. I think about the library as a place where supposedly you can't learn if there's noise, a place of exploration that, that demands your silence. But there are always people whispering in the libraries. There are always people passing notes in the libraries. There are always people finding voice given the constraints. There are always people coming out of the quiet. See, when those people come out of the quiet and they come together, the world changes. Hopefully we're going to see the world change. <laughs> um, over the past year, I've learned that there's so many people coming out of the quiet, so many people looking for ways to be seen and heard, waiting for others to share the belief that there's a collective power in those whispers coming together. It is what you see here. You see all of us tweeting, all of us who thought that we were alone, all of us who thought that nobody would hear our cries about the injustices that we faced. You saw it happen. We saw it. We lived it uh, when the protest started. You see here the power of people coming together out of the quiet. You see here those whispers spreading and changing the world. You know, our work as organizers... Our work as organizers is neither to tell people whispering in the library to shout or to tell them to be quiet, our work is to listen better. Because we have never been the voiceless, we have been the unheard. You know, social media became and is a place where the people come out of the quiet together, where the collective power of the whisper is captured, where the silence is rendered into a deafening sound. Because of Twitter, I'll never forget how the Palestinians taught us what to do when we got tear gassed. And because of Twitter, we learned to fight against erasure. And erasure often manifests in two ways. One is that either the story is never told or is told by everybody but us. And in this moment, we became the unerased. And we've heard in the past year so many people who thought they were alone, so many people who sat in the library silently, but who suddenly began to whisper last August. And those collective whispers made a noise that changed the world, made a noise that brought this conversation about race to the forefront in really powerful ways. We had and we've, we continue to have these robust conversations about uh, the 21 transgender women, mostly black, who've been murdered in 2015 simply for being who they are. And we now are talking about misgendering and pronouns in ways that many of us never thought would happen. I often think that the Black Lives Matter movement has helped people come out of the quiet about racism in America, but the fight for equality and equity is long. And it is not just a fight about race, it's also a fight about systemic and structural 
issues that affect so many of us um, around LGBT issues as well, people like me. You know, each of us will have to continue to find the people who are in the quiet and create space for and with them to come out of the quiet. Just because people aren't shouting doesn't mean that they're being silent. And just because people aren't showing up in the ways that you expect doesn't mean that they are hiding. If we do nothing else after this night, let us continue, as my friend and role model Jesse has done, to use our platforms to render visible the invisible, to help us see the beautiful complexity in all of our identity. Thank you.